Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Brain Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, psychotherapy, neuropsychology, neuroscience and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who has been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. Here in Mind Brain Talks, I discuss and describe different topics from psychology to neuroscience and I try to explain them the best as I can for you to understand a little bit more about it. All contents here are just for educational purposes and it's not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So today, let's talk about language and communication. This domain is also a very important domain in clinical neuropsychology because there are several impairments in language that, that individuals may develop through several neurological conditions. But first, let's see the manuals that I recommend for you today. So the first is the principles of neuropsychology. The second is the fundamentals of human neuropsychology. The third is the neuropsychology handbook. The fourth is the handbook of clinical neuropsychology, second edition. The fifth is Neuro Neuropsychological Assessment, 5th edition by Muriel Lezac. And the sixth is the Clinical Neuropsychology by Laura Gonstein and Jane McNeil. So now let's take a look on language and communication. Language may be described as a system of symbols and rules that allow us to communicate. Symbol is something that represents something else just like a flag or just like a letter, which represents a sound. And language has rules, which are specific ways of ordering symbols. There is a communication when a signal is emitted between a sender and the receiver and this signal is understood. Language is a complex and dynamic system of combined symbols used in different ways to communicate and think. This is the standard definition of American Speech Language Hearing Association. So, there are five channels of human communication. The verbal channel, which is a communication through words and phrases. Prosodic channel, which is the intonation, rhythm, accent and pauses that we use during our narratives and during our speech. Paralinguistic channel, which is referred to the tone of voice silences, interjections and expressions such as crying, mm, yawing. We use these noises to communicate something without using words. Kinetic channel, which refers to movements, movements of the face, head, body posture or body gestures. Static features of the interaction, which is referred to the interpersonal distance, orientation of the body and the aspect of a person. Also, there are several linguistic processes. Fluency, which may be phonetics or semantic, which is the ability to produce different words. Object naming, which is the ability to give a name to objects. Word finding, which is the ability to find a word in memory and use that word within a given sentence. Grammar and syntax. From the neuropsychological perspective, may be viewed as the ability to learn and apply language conventions, such as grammar and syntax, in order to think and communicate simple and complex ideas. Expressive language, which may be viewed as the ability to produce adequate speech. And receptive language, which also from the neuropsychological perspective, may be viewed as the ability to decode and understand other speech. Language and communication is a very broad domain, but have several specifications that I've described here. These specifications are very, very important for the communication between individuals. When we have some neurological condition that affects the language communication, typically language comprehension or language production, individuals start to feel very isolated and start to have several difficulties in expressing themselves and to be understood by the others. So now let's take a brief look on the neuroanatomical structures of language. So there are several areas that are typically described as the neuronal basis for language and communication. The first is Broca's area, which is involved in production of speech. 
Wernig area which is involved in understanding of speech, motor cortex which is responsible for the controls of the movements of muscles, and the arcuate fasciculus which connects Wernig's area to Broca's area. So these areas are connected with each other and these areas are typically described as the main areas responsible for language and communication, okay? So now let's see the summary and the key points. So language allows communication between ourselves and others. We look to five channels of human communication and we saw that there are different types of language processes. And we look to basic neuroanatomical structures of language. Well, it's all for today. Don't forget to see the video description regarding today's theme if you want to see the manuals and the books that I recommend to you. Also, if you like what I'm doing, please like, share and subscribe this video to support the channel. Also, you can leave a comment on the comment section below expressing your mind and expressing your thoughts. Let me know what you think about all the things that you saw here. Welcome to Mind Brain Talks and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!